to say. Period. <laughs> Thirty minutes to figure out what I'm gonna say, but we're gonna take it over to Scott first. That was beautiful. yeah. <laughs> that really was beautiful. So, good evening. No, I'm, I'm not gonna start like that again. Good evening, guys. It's Tuesday. It is the 26th of what month is it? January. January. <laughs> it's 2021. It's six days since the lights got turned back on. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, pay we just had our lights turned on this morning. I was. It didn't have power then. Speaking figuratively, as the country has woken up from the dark ages again. Oh man. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. And there goes half our audience. Our audience. <laughs> We're down to one viewer. <laughs> Those guys can't use the internet. <laughs> Internets. Internets. <laughs> remember, remember, we're, we're trying to build a Twitter following. So, you know, they're all on, what, what is it? Parlor. Parlor, <laughs> yeah. Sorry, yeah, parlor. So, yeah. Well, some of them are in federal jail. <laughs> <laughs> 150 of them. Just to, not that I'm keeping keep count. Why this are our numbers low? <laughs> but you know, so welcome to Between the Rolls. This is our weekly podcast where we Between discuss the, the current state of um, our little our little corner of the internet, our little corner of the D and D universe, uh, Murder Hobo Inc. So please follow us on Twitch, follow us on Twitter, check out our cool gear. You know, this is this was like you know Washington D.C. Scott's head disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that dog with the blanket trick. You know <laughs> what? What happened? <laughs> <What's> happened? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, what we we did we had we tried to discuss uh, at least one or two important themes and topics that uh, that we think is important in the world of uh, D and D, as well as the prior activities for the games that we did. We have our sponsors as well, Oddfish Games and Double Dog Dice. I'm oh, never getting <laughs> <laughs> Pirate Dog Dice, right? Is it Pirate? It's Pirate. pirate. Yeah, Pirate. Oh, sir. Double. <laughs> Producer, just shut them <laughs> off, man. I know it. <laughs> That's 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 <laughs> um, the pirate so, dog dare you. <laughs> dog. Oh, that's good. I like that. Thank that's you. Good. Thank you. Um, um, so Oddfish Games are the makers of Adventure Sense, and um, they're just wonderful things to help add a little bit of. Ah, that's right. There's a happy tree. Um, that the you happy can, little mountain. <laughs> happy little and you mountain. can buy some happy little D and D projects over at our. Our store, you just find that tiny URL. Tiny URL, that's right. Perhaps you like to listen to a happy little podcast where our not so happy little Carol ended up very pissed last Saturday. <laughs> you can also find that as a tiny URL. And you know, you're going to find that in chat. I wasn't pissed. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm waiting for the button to, uh, to start right, blinking. <laughs> right, right. No, exactly, exactly. So, what we try to do is we try to talk about the games I played last week. Uh, we try to then talk about a topic that uh, may be uh, relevant to what's coming up for uh, for the next few weeks, or just some general themes about what's going on in the world of gaming, as we know for for our little corner of D and D. So we'll start off uh, quickly. I, I would make introductions, but you know, it's Frank, it's Kyle, it's me, it's Dave. I mean, you know, same old, same old, baby. Yeah, it's all. That's it's right. All, I'm all Frank. Thing. And I'm I play David. With little boys. And I'm Kyle. <laughs> and I'm Scott. <laughs> oh, somebody's going to jail tomorrow. <laughs> uh, so why don't we start? We're talking off about. Uh, why don't we start talking about um, the first subject, which was we were going to, I think, discuss cacophony. Was the first on the list there, yeah. and um, uh, I think. Frank, that was your cue to talk. No, it was not. It was Dave. Dave, yeah. Dave is going to talk about. That's right. Oh, yeah. You're gonna talk this about one and the next one. <laughs> yes, you have. You have He's double dog duty. Time, man. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So well, why don't you tell Dave. us about? Why don't you tell us about cacophony? What happened in this week's episode? Okay. 
Well, those of you who don't know, uh, Cacophony is our Thursday night show. Uh, it is not a camp. It is not a campaign, Carol. It is a soap opera. <laughs> so I just check. She's not watching us. She I she know. knows she was going to get pissed. She ain't going to watch this one either. <laughs> <laughs> uh so that's our thursday night's show this past thursday in our ongoing episode where our heroes from cacophony are traveling the the plains of uh telosia uh to get to the temple of the kurd uh to help restore power to uh the i don't know what would you call her frank i mean she's she's kind of like heir to the throne heir to the throne we're trying to recapture the tower so she can so she again can take the seat of power and unite all the tribes of telosium so uh yeah so this is our what second week or a few days out or third 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 episode you guys have at the end just reached the old emu settlement Yes. So we're, we're, we were on the border uh, to uh, Emu, where is, that's the desolated area where the Tower of the Kurd is, right? No. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yes. You do play in the game, right? Yeah, I do. <laughs> I am, and I am paying attention. It's just things are getting really confusing, Frank, because <laughs> there's all these borders. You know, it's like, it's like the Americas or something. So It's almost like the Great Sioux Nation. Pretty much, or the American West. Gee, I wonder where I got my inspiration, inspiration from. <laughs> so, anyway, last week's episode ended with a uh, another uh, uh, journey to another outpost, and um, uh, after we had what stopped for the night there, and then ventured forward, uh, we noticed that there was uh, uh, buzzards in the sky. Something had been killed. Uh, that led to an encounter with multiple displacer beasts. Uh, yeah, a, a battle in which, yeah, my charge almost got killed again. <laughs> and that fact was pointed out in the episode. <laughs> and uh, blatantly pointed out. <laughs> blatantly pointed out. And then what we level ended up. Your players. Then? We're, we're quick, yeah, let me we talk. are we we are at level six now. Level so, six, and you yeah. and how many how many displacer beasts were you up against? Three. Wow. Their their classes are not the most powerful. Nope. And you know the mm. thing is, he is a changeling, so he could just look like a displacer beast. It doesn't work, and like he'd that. be perfectly fine. <laughs> that would be fine if that was the case, but it's not. <laughs> And you you had a fairly combat centric episode last last episode too, correct? Very, is this, very is this the start of a trend? You're gonna the, the soap opera is gonna. You be should more... really get back into the city. It's dangerous. Yeah, the as, as, <laughs> no, things are about to change for him uh, I, Thursday. I'm surprised Carrie's that screaming in my ear. We got to get back to cacophony. So. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> Camille, our producer, is saying, uh, saying, screaming in my ear, she needs coffee. So anyway, and that's her character, Camille. So anyway, uh, we run into uh, a hunting party from a neighboring nation of, um, of tribes members. I, I can't remember what was the tribe, Frank. It was, Erda, the Erda. Erda tribe. A neutral base. They were stalking the displacer beasts. Uh, we ended up killing them, and of course they the displacer beasts, not the earth. <laughs> no, no, not the earth. They, they, they appeared and uh, you know conveyed to us that they were stalking the party. They had injured one, and um, so anyway, we shared the kill with them. Uh, we ended up having a meal with them, and then. Uh, we get escorted to the borders of uh, Emu, where our my charge says I'm not going in there <laughs> uh, to this desolate area. That's kind of like the Grand Canyon, except there's mesas in the middle, and uh, apparently the tower must be on a mesa that's still out of sight. And so, Caitlin fell off her horse. And Caitlin fell off her horse. And that's where our episode ended. <laughs> ended in a cliffhanger. She ran into a creature that is half lion, half horse. Like humanoid. So Scott should remember what those are. Oh yeah. Yep. 
So it's going to get very interesting, folks. So definitely turn in next uh, Thursday or this Thursday coming. And yeah, see how the hell we get out of that. Caitlin rolled the nat one and ended up falling off her horse. Ass over apple cart over the side of a cliff. And so and she's the one that told you, oh, let's just take the horses and it'll be fine. Yeah, I'm I to it'll walk be it. fine. <laughs> I rolled a one. You fell off. <laughs> And rest assured, Caitlin's a better <laughs> equestrian in real life than what she is, you know, in this game. She is hope. Caitlin E. Coyote. Pretty Super much. Genius. <laughs> genius. And that's it for, for our Thursday episode. So, okay. What, what are the, um, what are the, uh, what should the party be looking forward to on uh, next episode? Um, figuring out what to do with this half lion. Okay. Right. yeah trying trying <laughs> trying to decide whether this creature that caitlin has encountered is either friend or foe or if we have an encounter coming up because we already rolled initiative so okay. see how that goes hopefully just dis- our diplomacy skills are, 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 are working yes let's just hope if only there was somebody <laughs> with a 20 charisma that, like. could, that could talk his way out of it yeah <laughs> oh god <laughs> mature okay. own, uh, mature audiences only, only folks precisely so um what about our our i think we had a one shot this last saturday garen's yes. bluff is that what it was called garen's bluff and garen's bluff yeah and i, so I who, who all played in uh garen's bluff well, who, who are all with the uh, who are all with the participants? That was an interesting. Well, it's not me. <laughs> <laughs> it was an awesome show. Uh, we had okay. a guest player. Uh, his name is Zach. Uh, he's mm-hmm. a voice actor. You can follow him on Twitter, Zach Meow on at Twitter, okay. or hear his spiel on FX. Yes, I figured out that's where he's most. Yes, he he. I'm not going to give it away, but he's the voice of a national program <laughs> that, that airs on FX. So. Great voice actors. He also does uh, dubbing for anime uh, for Cartoon Network and stuff. Like oh, that. wow. Great. Yeah. yeah. Great. Really talented guy. Awesome guest. Um, so our episode, uh, the players were myself, Carol, Rob, and Zach. And our intrepid adventurers meet. Uh, after a big storm has blown in off to the off the coast, it is like after basically it's after a hurricane. There are trees down, you know, things destroyed in its wake. The town's folks would like our help to to clear away some of the debris and get things functioning again. But nope, we decide to go back and drink at the tavern. <laughs> Frank had to coax us out of that. <laughs> I had to give them giant ducks to float around the bay in cocksuckers. <laughs> <laughs> a dead pirate washed up on the shore. Was he dead or or was he still alive? He was still alive. Crazy, crazy and unconscious. Crazy and unconscious. We knew he was a pirate because he had it tattooed <laughs> across his forearm. <laughs> My players are dumb. <laughs> uh, he had to spell it out for us. Big, big, big poofy shirt. So after P-Y-R-T-E, pirate. <laughs> and we were reluctant to get going because it took the DM and the, the non-player characters to say, you want to go venture out on the coast to see if you find any more pirates out there. Choo, choo. <laughs> the only yep. way only way Frank could get us out there is to lure us out there with giant canards as our mounts. And mm. he had me at that. I still wouldn't have gone. Oh, man. I thought yeah. they were going to play quarters in the tavern while everybody else went <laughs> up. I really did. <laughs> Beer bitch. ponged, you know? <laughs> oh, man. Wouldn't have been surprised if it would have turned out like that. But I'm sure we could have made that a great episode. Anyway, uh, <laughs> so we get, we get on our bar games episode. Well, we did, we did have the tavern episode. We did have the tavern episode. Oh, okay, okay. We had the but that wasn't episode. a bar game, so. Yeah, okay, well, I like tavern games then, right? To where. We totally should do a tavern game yeah, episode. Yeah, tavern games episode. Darts. Darts are going to be poisoned. Yep. Oh, yeah. 
you yeah. know that and, and you uh, end with darts right so you know <laughs> or, or what's that what's the the dagger game where you go in between your fingers yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> my I finger fillet mumbly I peg fillet. <laughs> right. oh god yeah that would be great but anyway after muck's much coaxing we take our giant non-rubber ducks <laughs> and float along the coastline uh till we find uh, a pir pirate wreckage uh there we go to inspect the record wreckage uh, -huh. uh we hear voices uh apparently uh it is a pirate ship that uh had washed up on on the shore and uh, there, there were still crew members around. And uh, yeah, we decided to uh, engage, <laughs> engage in exploring the, this, this beach uh, pirate vessel. Uh, anyway, after uh, Zach's character, Chutney, uh, <laughs> decided to set the pirate ship on fire, uh, one as a distraction, two as to cause damage to the ship to get another entryway in, and yeah, battle ensued with that. <clears throat> Our canards get get damaged. Chutney decides to do the most humane thing and put his his, his giant duck out of its misery by by just severing its head off right in front of everything. He should he should have rolled an intimidation check on that fright because I think yeah, a pi a pirate would have pissed his pants if he saw that. Yeah, that <laughs> so, would have been a good idea. So oh, I'm sorry. What an intimidation check for killing an animal a in giant front of people. In front of well, hey, his uh, own animal, though. his own animal, yeah, like their own puppy being torn in half right in front of them. Hey, you're a dumbass. <laughs> I was playing a dragonborn, so that 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 giant canard was a giant duck dinner. After <laughs> so, after we waylaid uh, to the remaining pirates that were in in, in inside and outside the vessel. We find uh, Chutney and Nimbus, the dragonborn that I was playing, find a treasure chest on the inside that was trapped and Chutney didn't know it. And that was hilarious. Uh, yeah, Moss Pants, who was played by Rob, decides to venture into a uh, cliff where somehow a crocodile got washed into the cave on the, on the top of the cliff. But as it turns out, the cave at the top of the cliff was also connected to a cave that was at the bottom. And that's hmm. where our final encounter happened. Time frame issue. <laughs> Time frame issues, because there was a lot of acting. No. So, uh, yeah, long story short, Moss Pants has the encounter with the uh, crocodile, wins, turns out on top, eliminates the cave down the bottom. The big bad's in the cave. A turtle pirate captain with a jewel encrusted, a jewel encrusted shell. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the big battle, and that's when all hell broke loose, folks. <laughs> so we killed the pirate uh, turtle. You know, it was a pretty tough battle. I mean, we pretty much got our asses handed to us. The, those that were there, Rob was just finishing up with the crocodile. Uh, so my, myself, Nimbus, Chutney the droid who was zach and uh our cleric luna hades who never heals you know is always always blows her spells on, on that uh didn't have a uh, a heal spell pocketed <clears throat> for this because yeah the tides turned abruptly mm. after that with killing the turtle uh captain uh sea captain chutney causes uh bonfire uh create bonfire to burn the the turtle corpse and then that was during the battle after the battle he takes the <laughs> the bonfire throws it on luna hades so he had like a hit point left poor luna was gone after that next thing you know uh that triggered nimbus and Rob, who suddenly thought this was a free-for-all battle royale. Yeah, Luna fails her death saves thanks to Nimbus and Chutney had getting, getting caught in the crossfires of Thunderwaves, folks. <laughs> it was a firefight! So... <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, so there's no walking back from that. Zach did a great job. He ended up killing all of us. He ended up uh he had an we had an encounter with giant wasps that uh he took the the stinger off of one of the giant wasps, used it at the end as the coup de gras on all of us to stab us through the throats as we were unconscious and walked away with his treasure and my duck dinner. And that's the, that's how it ends. Yeah, and one of our cast members was extremely pissed. So <laughs> that'll come it off in the episode. David yeah. was extremely pissed. I was extremely pissed. He's raging right now. He's using right the now, alcohol in his cup to uh, no, no, we the third. <laughs> Love to all our players, and I apologize because of my ensuing firefight with with Zach. Yeah, it was it was mass casualties. So, so yeah, you know, I, I think Zach ended up with like two hit points tops. Mm-hmm. Only yeah, because he healed at one point in time. Yeah, and it was only because I rolled shitty that in damage that he survived. So it was like, well, shit. And then he rolls high and. Mm-hmm. I'm down, you know. Yep. So, yep. Yep. so but it was no. fun. It was fun that that one on one, you know, trade off with spells against each other. But yeah, Carol, yeah. Carol didn't, Carol didn't TV, think TV so. Your own party members are fun. Oh yeah, yeah. it ain't called Ring Corn RPG. <laughs> <laughs> but but That's yeah fun. yeah. So I do apologize to our fellow cast member that was upset and her character got killed. Sorry, Rob. Yeah, sorry, Rob. <laughs> so so anyway, that was our episode. It was an exciting episode. If you get Sounds a chance, like if you get a chance, check it out. Uh, follow and Zach. where can they where can they check that out at? <laughs> Uh, in our archive at our YouTube your... archives. That's yes. Right. yes. Bah, 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 bah. All right. So our third uh, episode that we had, I believe, was uh, called the celebration of what is Lear. 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 He's a Welsh god. Lear. All right. <laughs> Sounds good, Frank. Why don't you tell us about about uh, what happened? This was your tri generational game that you have. It is the oh, Sunday right. tri-generational game in Margu, and these guys are in the halfling kingdom of Dre Glary. Uh, trying, they really don't want to burn the town down, but I think they're going to burn the town down. <laughs> burn uh, it down, guys. <laughs> in this or episode, wave it. Well, or in this episode <laughs> they burn down the pawn dealership <laughs> rather abruptly. They got lost. Uh, one of the funniest things is Copious V. Bitters, the uh, gnomish entrepreneur, uh, thought he had found the cellar of a tavern and began to taste the small casks of fluid, and it turned out to be the leather workers' shop. Because <laughs> he rolled a one, a three, a seven, and an eleven. <laughs> oh, man. So I was going to make it a tavern, but with those rolls, I'm like... Uh, you're drinking turpentine, dumbass. <laughs> uh, our resident rogue slash last sane member of the party uh, got hit on yet again. He got to observe the tribute to Lear, which included a wagon full of goodies, gets dumped into the ocean to satisfy Lear, the god of the sea. Uh, they are torn between burning this place down and diving in, diving and, in. And treasure. They also discovered uh, some bags which look remarkably like tribute bags that were wet and musty in the basement of the pawn dealership. Mm. So there's a lot of weaving going on. Uh, these guys have had a lot of good times in the halfling town of Lightreach. But they're kind of figuring out that everybody there's a thief. <laughs> but I thought not... I thought you were going to say musty bear uh, bags in the ocean and all that, and I'm just like, wow, that sounds they, like a Dexter episode. <laughs> they they know they notice that the halfling adolescents mm-hmm. swim like dolphins, and they haven't been able to figure out exactly how. Wow. Um, but they are very fast and can hold their breath for lengthy periods of time. So if they can figure that out, I anticipate them going 
out into the ocean next to the cliff, diving down below, and certainly finding nothing but a big old pile of treasure. Certainly no guardians, nothing serious, not. like an no. elemental or shit like that. Uh, they mm. are fifth level. Uh, this past weekend, there were four of them, which that eh, does pose a challenge on challenge ratings, but uh, yeah. we manage. Uh, but it's a grandfather, uh, son, and family member, and then grandson. And uh, they are a hoot to play with. Uh, so if you hilarious. get a chance... Yeah, tinyurl.com, yep. mhobo, Inc. archive. They're all in the archive. Back to you, Scott. Outstanding. Thank you very much for that very detailed um, description of, uh, of what happened there on, on, on Sunday on your tri-generational show. Sounds like fun, and uh, we'll all have to check that out most certainly. So now is whenever we normally switch gears after talking about the activities of the past week to talk about what we should be thinking of, what our topic for this week was. And I believe the topic for this week was, what else? The upcoming campaigns. So, new year, new campaign part two. But it doesn't work quite as well as nice as new year, new you part two. But uh, New year, yeah. new you part two. It's true. That was so much better. Part two if you're a big uh, Mazes and Monsters fan. Ah, uh, Pardue makes us Pardue. Uh, Pardue. Pardue I prefer man. Fondue, actually, but know what that is. I'd like Scott knows Fondue, Pardue, mazes and monsters, yeah. cheese, chocolate. Uh, I'm I, I being asked by the producer, does Kyle know what uh, mazes and monsters is? God, what is shelter? Oh, hold on, hold on. That well, is a movie with Tom Hanks. It is. It is. Yeah, suck it. It is. He, he did. It's, uh, it's he, the, he uh, got it. Yeah. Is it the one that demonizes where uh, Tom Hanks During goes the scare. crazy? Crazy, right. And yes. Some yes. building called the Twin Towers in New York. I, I think that's all made I've never up heard of them. those before. <laughs> yeah. Must have been before my time. <laughs> <laughs> Almost. <laughs> Oh man! Uh, <laughs> it's too soon. It's too soon. It's too soon. Still too soon. <laughs> Still too soon. <laughs> so, so um, but the topics that we would like to talk about there, uh, Mr. Kyle, we we were looking at you know creating a campaign. So why don't you tell us? Um, I'm going to turn it over to you, Kyle. We <laughs> talked about all sorts of things for arc and flavor, concept creation, restrictions, and everything else like that, but. This is your show for the half part here. You've had 30 minutes oh to think gosh. about what you were going to talk about. So I didn't I'm think about it. Quiet. Honestly, quiet. I was Showtime. so quiet that entire time. No, I wasn't doing away. anything. I, yeah, no, I wasn't even trying to talk while muted. I was even weird watching. Thing. <laughs> <laughs> That's true, too. <laughs> Nice. He, just, he just had the thing on loop. He was actually gone somewhere else and just kind of scooted in there at the last minute. It was his avatar. <laughs> I had to poop. I had to poop a lot. Well, <laughs> was that too that'll much? Get us, that'll get us viewers. I, I thought that's it was. true. That's true. All those viewers that left, they just came back. <laughs> hey, Vegas feeds, welcome to Murder Hobo, where I talk about my poo for you. Part two. Uh, <laughs> There's some guy out there saying, you know, they got a girl on there who dresses up like a space creature. I'm going to turn it off. And then I was pooping. Eh, this is <laughs> <laughs> this is a wrong <laughs> show. Wrong <laughs> show. That's Caitlin, folks. If you didn't want to know, <laughs> that's really yeah. good. Who I get to have in my campaign? So blah, <laughs> we're having everybody cosplay in my campaign. That's, <laughs> that's all the nice things I can say about my campaign. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, I'm going to dress up like a giant poo so it's it's all good uh, i'm gonna have my uh dog do dice if dj is gonna dress up as a harem girl i'm watching <laughs> I, otherwise <laughs> i'm gonna watch reruns of friends he's got <laughs> that hair that flips just perfectly That's oh yeah true. i mean not it's not scott hair scott has I know, man I mean, hair. dj I have, he's got that flippy ponytail going on yeah. <laughs> thor hair. Got nice hair thor hair yeah yeah very good very good. So on the Wait, idea of which Thor, like Marvel Thor or Thor of Mike, Mike. Oh, okay. That's what I, 
Okay. Okay. Anyway, well, last that's... time we talked about my campaign. This time we've got Frank on to talk about his Saturday campaign. We also have two of his players here who are going to pry him for as many questions and secrets as possible. <laughs> yeah. No. Gonna... I, I think the important thing to remember is, and I think it was in the the immortal words of the movie Braveheart. Never You're all that. fucked. <laughs> We're all fucked. <laughs> uh, these guys are going to go ahead and start out in a Bronze Age kind of quasi era. There is a rather large twist in it, so I can't go into too much detail. They are all of age, and they are going to join the hunting party uh, to prove their adulthood. Not manhood, because we don't give a shit about male, female, or other. Their adulthood. So they are going to go out on a hunt. Uh, starting this campaign uh, and maybe if they're lucky they will find some Aserac feathers proving that they are top shelf kind of hunters uh, they will not have a map each one has been given their independent story each one has been given a partial story that is shared with one of the other players uh, the intent for the game is present they do not know what it is it is up to them to figure it out uh through gameplay and lucky dice rolls they should be quite entertaining because uh we'll call this the old guy group uh dave uh david how old are you 51 <laughs> so you're the young one <laughs> <laughs> nice look boy <laughs> look boy i say <laughs> Uh, yes, we. Uh, oh, well, no, Jesse, I think is the youngest. Jesse, no, I, I'm, 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 I'm 49, so I'm. Oh yes, I might be the youngest. youngest. I think Jesse's like 32 or something. Yeah. Uh, oh my Jesse's gosh. not much older than I am. Yeah. So, so <laughs> oh we my got. Gosh. We have Jesse, who was in the Fink, uh, riding the elephant. Uh, if you watch the last campaign, we've yeah. got Scott, we've got David, and we've got not Moss Pants Rob. Uh, and these four are going to be a ranger, a monk, a druid, and a fi a ranger, a ranger, a monk, a druid, mm -hmm. and I think a fighter. Yeah, I was meant to say that we all walk into a bar. We, uh, they we, say, are, ah. I. <laughs> we are all uh, so we are so dead. <laughs> yeah. uh, but. Uh, It'll be interesting. You just got to stop with Ranger, Monk, and Druid. And we like, <laughs> why well, you got, tried? You got two heel bitches, so you should be okay. Uh, yeah. Magic is run, non-existent. Run and fire. That's right. Mage, mage magic is non-existent at this point in time. So Subject how's the Druid working? Uh, druid is shaman a.k.a. Type. shaman type. Shaman type, yeah. So cleric, if, for those of you who like Dragonlance, and yes... Uh, Margaret and Tracy announced that there was going to be another trifecta of books yeah. uh, in their world of Kryn uh, magic was fine uh, the gods had to be discovered we are right. just flipping the script a little bit uh, stealing an idea essentially uh, going 180 You're welcome. magic uh, probably exists but uh, there is a twist so mm -hmm. Hopefully these guys enjoy it. If not, it'll be a short campaign and we'll move on to a different one. <laughs> Just like Kyle's. Hey. We're Vegas odds of Kyle uh, say uh, three episodes before uh, DJ gets pissed and kills everybody because uh, That's Ernie DJ can't stop setting you. fire on shit. <laughs> <laughs> I've made sure Bernie's or Ernie's character doesn't Bernie. have any <laughs> fire spells. <laughs> He's gonna find oil, but yeah. It, unlike <laughs> uh, unlike standard medieval fantasy, this ain't that. Uh, mm -hmm. Think uh, Alexander the Greatish uh, kind of era, uh, but they live in a mountain, uh, and it is a peaceful mountain with a serene lake where nothing bad ever happens. It's gorgeous, and we got two humans, mm -hmm. a half elf. And a Leoness. Is that right? Is that how it's pronounced? Leoness? Leonin, but if it's female, Leoness. Yeah. We, yeah, we have uh, uh, the guy who did the Tangled voices there, Ron Perlman. Uh, he's yeah. going to be, that's what he's going to look like. Beauty oh, and the Beast. Nice. So, oh, yeah. okay. And there is, there is a backstory to that 
particular character. Everybody's got backstories, uh, but the <laughs> malformation uh, has a very special backstory. Mm-hmm. Let's say, uh, how easy was it for you to get the backstory out of your characters? These guys are like freaking Stephen King. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a good thing or a bad thing? <laughs> yeah, it was fine. I, I'm like, just send me your character, send me your backstory. I got two full sheets of characters. I got uh, probably six pages of backstory. That's right. Yeah. Well, you know, Kyle, when you're an experienced and quality DM, <laughs> shit happens or people pay. <laughs> Frank, Frank just got the old school good players. Yeah, so. yeah that's right. where, where Where your campaign is going to be most likely fast paced and action filled. These fuckers are going to be on a sightseeing tour at the pyramids. Oh, look at that. I wonder what the lore is here. I'd yeah, like to understand pretty much. what this is. Is there a book around that we sure. can start? Oh, look, it's uh, Sneed's Guide to the Who Gives a Shit. <laughs> <laughs> so I have had to include Sneed on sabbatical. <laughs> he, he's, I've got to say, he used that time bullshit again. And he came back he's there. Uh, but yeah, they uh, that, these guys are all old school players so they'll like lore so i have to spell it out, out for my us. ass or <laughs> start writing so i opted to started writing so uh they have several areas they will not see a map uh that makes any sense at all to them and that's part of the big reveal uh but they're just gonna have to trust their gut so they're dead <laughs> pretty much so they made you got, it this far in life. Yeah. They have to have something in there. That's true. Kidney stones, probably. When you guys find the book called Britannica, <laughs> you'll you'll understand. We'll understand. Yeah. If we can so read, that, of course. Yeah, that's true. And actually, not all of them can read. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, I'm really I, kind I, of putting the screws to them. I I I think my character has a quite low intelligence and he kind of carries that as a chip on his shoulder because people you know his his nickname i'm not going to go into my character but his nickname is blue but but, you know people like to um you know when they say his name they like to say it real slow because he's you know he's not all there sometimes so that's uh Uh, he's not dumb Um, He's just not, you know, on the uptake as much as other people are. (laughs) All right, here's my guess. Your character was born in the wintertime during a blizzard. They were left out in the snow too long, which is where they turned the color blue. In which case, that's when they found you were like, oh, shit, we got to warm up this baby. But you lost a lot of brain cells. nickname is probably... (laughs) (laughs) He's a monk, so you know. Blue. Blue's referring to something else. Blue, <laughs> big uh, blue. Yep. I, I, you know, I, I hear fun. we got an in with a guy who can help in those kind of situations. That's true, uh, <laughs> yeah. Zach. Uh, you, you've heard Zach's voice. You may not have ever seen Zach, but you've yeah. heard his. You've voice. definitely heard his heard voice because he no, can no, recite certain. his last work verbatim, and it was. I know exactly who you are now. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I have That's included awesome. a variety of weird magic items, as I like to do, that will assist each one of the four for their particular shortcomings. Because as old players, I don't think we have any min maxers here. They are going to shoot from the hip, and it should be a bizarre campaign. So I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I just have to make sure that I can dribble out enough lore crap to satisfy everybody. We'll yeah, see. that's right. I'm sure you will. No shortage yeah, of lore. I'm sure you will. I'm sure you will. You're you're I, you're quite you're a quite prolific writer, Frank. You know, you, you write a, you a lot of stuff, you know, so yeah, but I gotta keep willing, my numbers you, up so I can't do the lore unless I want to do you a, put your if you put your mind to it, you know, you can just try sh- just Shut up, Blue. <laughs> <laughs> My boy, Blue. Oh, oh Kyle. We lost Kyle. Oh, <laughs> Kyle's dead. I was switching over to so, Kyle. Hey, Ross so again, so Kyle is Scott. Again. Scott is Kyle. <laughs> no. Okay, he's just so like, sorry. fuck you guys. <laughs> <laughs> and the producer just had an injury. Uh. So, so. <laughs> so that, that is my take on it in a nutshell there is a rather big reveal um 
so I, ha I have to hedge my bets. But there's, there's going to be a lot going on, a lot to be discovered, and a lot of fun to be had. Uh -huh. what now, would you oh, go, go on, on. Scott. Uh, you're no, the I, player, I, I, so you asked the like, question. No, I, I, I had, I had one, one question. What would you, if this is a successful campaign, how would you see, um, and it goes on for a little while, where would you see the, uh, you know, characters? Because you're probably going to be using the milestone system, correct? Correct. Right. Mm -hmm. So at this moment, where do you see that that milestone thing capping out at, more or less? I like to stop at nine. I uh, like to stop at nine. Uh, nine or ten, because uh, being old school, we all know that when you hit nine, you get followers, you get to build right. strongholds, strongholds and things like that. Obviously, not going to be castle-ish uh, per se. Uh, I can't really tell you. No, no, no. That's fine. Uh, the I, I pinnacle, because uh, again, uh, if you tune into episode probably five, everybody will be like, "No shit." <laughs> okay, <laughs> now I'm yeah. tracking. Uh, but yeah, yeah. I, I see you guys as uh, being heroes, easily recognized, uh, and all the all the standard trappings that come with being heroes. Uh, maybe carving out your own kingdom. Uh, because Bronze Age, you know, uh, you kill a couple goats and all of a sudden you're God of Mycia. So, right, should be right. easy. <laughs> now, when you say Bronze Age, are you thinking like Stone Age, but they just happen to have bronze tools or where they uh, grow up at? And I think that was included in the background. I'm not sure. Yeah, uh, they, they grow up in a mountain mm -hmm. with about three, four hundred people, and there are copper and tin deposits in the base. And you are either uh, a miner, a farmer, either animal or plant, or you are a hunter. These four adventurers will be the hunter class because they are going to go out, provide food, and oh shit, there's a problem here. So that that those are the three classes. Uh, I did not include any love interests at this point in time. Uh, some of them are orphans. Some of them have family. Uh, some of, one of them has a rather unique backstory, which allowed me to flesh out an entirely different portion on the map because I'm like, oh, cool. I had not considered that, so I will add that. Sure. So that's cool, but it uh, cool. it should be interesting. Now, one of the things I did for my campaign is I asked the players <clears throat> to come up with four rumors, two about where they're heading and two about the world in general. You do anything like that for your players where they make I, something? I, I like doing that. I didn't do it with this campaign because mm -hmm. it's... Uh, and did I send you the mock-up of this one? Uh, I don't think so. Okay. I got the same thing where everyone else did. There's so. a the big reveal is it's nice, but it's extremely problematic to go ahead and point out, you know, just like Scott, where do you see this? Eh, I can't really tell you. <laughs> uh, okay. you know, here's a question then. And uh, actually, someone asked it on the Facebook page too, where you tell your players one kind of campaign, but you can't tell them where it goes other than that very first session mm -hmm. and how do you how do you deal with that as a gm and also try and meet the expectations of the players when it's like oh is that what you're expecting that's not what's gonna happen like um in this instance i'm throwing uh, uh cthulhu at my players mm -hmm. and one of the things i would have I think I would have liked to have done would be like, yeah, you're just going to be adventurers starting this city. You're going to an island. By the way, halfway through, Cthulhu. And <laughs> <laughs> uh, how do you kind of deal with and that with the all... players? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're all fucked. Uh, for me, have, knowing each of the four players and having, having their trust, uh, which is really important for any DM, young or old, uh, these guys, I think, trust that they're going to have something entertaining that I throw at them. They're, they know if I'm sending them this way, they know something is coming this way. So that will keep them on their toes. It keeps them off their guard and it allows for expansion because, uh, and I shared this with Kyle. One of the things that I came up with is just a two column Excel spreadsheet and it just hits the high points. So for milestoning it, you know, for level one, this is what they have to do. And 
until I write it out, nobody gives a shit. So I go down the line up to ninth level and say, these are the goals that they need to hit, da, 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 and then we can flesh it out. What this does for DMs is it allows them to say, oh, player B says they're from this location. I can interchange it. Uh, that way they get, for lack of a better term, an immersive uh, playing experience because, okay, I've taken your backstory. I'm going to push it out onto you. Uh, it's like having Carol meet her twin sister that she didn't even know existed. Really. <laughs> right. um, so these, these guys, I think, <laughs> trust me. Now I just have to make sure that I don't fuck it up. Yeah, don't. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna fuck it up. Let's <laughs> <laughs> be honest. <laughs> no, it's it's it is spelled out. Uh, it it will be fun. It'll be lore based. As soon as Kyle and I figured out who we were gonna have, mm -hmm. I, I'm looking and I'm like, okay, these guys are old school players. We're gonna go lore based. Uh, there's still gonna be a lot of combat, uh, but the role playing experience in the Stone slash Bronze Age is going to be a little bit different in that you have a tyrant here, you've got a tyrant there, you've got a good king, you got a bad king. Uh, and learning isn't, at least initially, going to be a big thing. Uh, you aren't going to have a lot of aesthetic monks running around. You're going to have old Blue and his boys running around. Right. Subject to change. Now, when do they find the Statue of Liberty? Uh, that, 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 that was actually, I actually thought about that. I'm like, man, I ought to do that. <laughs> uh, well, I don't have any. Damn you! Oh. I don't have any eight men at this time. I mean, I could, but, you know. And none of them picked the name Charlton Heston, which really pissed me off, because I would have done that. That's <laughs> great. <laughs> This strange word, but only one of you can read Manhattan. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, it, it is. Uh, it's going to be interesting. And when does it kick off? When's it kicks off a week session? from this Saturday. Kyle's oh kicks off gosh, a week from this Thursday. So, and we will each be doing it every other week. Uh, the off week on Thursday will be cacophony. The off week on Saturday will be a one shot. So still, still pitching to you forever DMs out there. Yep. If you need a break, come on over. Come to us, arms open. You can murder the other PCs. No We've Kill already seen everybody. everyone. Else. <laughs> it's well, acceptable. We don't care we, about we, your we background. No judgment. No judgment. No judgment. You're fine. Kill a little bit here. of judgment. A little bit of judgment. If it's my character again, and I, if Henry Larry dies bit. again, I swear to God, I'm just going <laughs> to kill at 15 minute mark. Just kill everybody. <laughs> We're playing for two hours. I don't care. Everybody dies. <laughs> I'm at full health. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I, I don't think I've played, played in any one shot where we just immediately started killing one another. Now, I've played in several where at the end, I I die. Um, I, I think Air Calls died five or six times. Um, and this, I, I think the Rust I, I, Monsters. I remember that. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And it gives he has that noble nature that makes him one to like you know sacrifice himself at the end. This so was that, this was my first murder by Murder Hobo, and since I've been on Murder yeah. Hobo, our quote unquote Murder Hobos was just screwing over the party at the last right. possible second. Right. This was the first death, and I was like, "This is kind of awesome, but yeah. damn!" <laughs> well, I'm to be actually fair. Quite... They don't end in death that often by a party mm -hmm. member. No, <laughs> it's it's me, uh, me again, <laughs> me a third time. Uh, in the early years, Kyle was always doing this. Is it yeah, forty-five. <laughs> Uh, now I realize that the clock is right up here and I don't have to be so obvious about it. I, I, I mean, get a chat message, I'm pulling back. Oh boy. <laughs> with Zach, I could not, I wasn't even mad. I was just like, slow clap, bra you know, the Rudy clap at the end, bravo. You know, yeah. I was just like, well fucking played you I have to be well endowed and well enhanced to make a move like that there nice. you go or an <laughs> odd fish 
gamer. Mm. <laughs> uh, there you go. There you go. Very good. Very yeah. good. And I did get to play in their hot RPG with a cat this past weekend. Ooh, how'd How that go? That? It was kind of fun. I liked it. <laughs> I was the only male that there. Sounds so like producer, the producer is, is just being like a little front bunch of chicks. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it, it was fun. It's going to go on Kickstarter soon. It was interesting because the DM had the scenario, and then all the players, she would send out a uh, kind of a questionnaire on the web, and then you would answer if you had your pet close by. You would have to gauge the response on your pet's reaction. Uh, my cats are all antisocial and hate my guts, so I just had to guess what they were going to do. But it, it was kind of fun. Uh, spoiler alert, it is on Twitch right now, but uh, all of our cats, because we were playing as cats, uh, got boarded on our spaceship by pirates, and we all ended up going over to the other side and being pirates. <laughs> and left Space our shanties, folks. That's a thing on Twitter, space shanties. Yep. And that's so, what that is. It was fun, though. I that enjoyed it. Fun. That sounds fun. What else you got, Kyle? Other than You're being muted. muted. Oh. We should have just let him talk. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I figured. Oh, that's a good point. Place. That's a good point, Kyle. <laughs> no, I was going to ask. I don't have wow. a cat, but I have a three-year-old. Yeah, I don't have like a cat. Thing. Yeah, same thing. Same yeah. thing. Okay. I just want to double check. I have neither, but. I have a cat, and I have a dog, and I have a turtle, and I have fish. <sighs> I love turtles. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We do. Cool. I actually, I, I have what a, I have we're a really surprised is you don't have baby chickens running around at this point. Well, <laughs> Scott can't have chickens according really to I judicial can't. review. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. I mean, that was kind of part of my parole. So you know, I couldn't. Can't raise chickens. That, that <laughs> moment. And when you uh, did the speedy run to the Baywatch and uh, Eric Hall taking the head wound and talking normal are the three <laughs> greatest Eric Hall moments. Probably so. Probably yeah. so. Oh, I, I just love being part of one of them. That was yeah, great. That was good. That was good. No, but um, um, so about the, uh, um, I, had, I had a question about the campaign. I actually did. I had one more question about about the players in the campaign. I was going to ask about the hook, but if you got a question that you think no, 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 I don't. Maybe it'll maybe it'll maybe it'll come. Maybe it'll just ask about yeah. Why don't, yeah. yeah. Why don't you All right, go? Frank, you got a first episode coming up in uh, a little over a week. What's your hook in the first episode? Already got written out uh, four months ago. Uh, the hook for the first episode is: You four have come of age. You must now prove as part of the warrior class your ability to be a hunter uh, and great hunters in the city of Ba uh, have air uh, feathers. Uh, but the air is a fierce creature. Hopefully you won't see any on your first time out. Hopefully you will just find uh, hippos, which kill more people than almost Mine. coronavirus. <laughs> hippos almost. are deadly. Don't fuck they with aren't. hippos. Um, but yeah, they will go out onto the plains of Ga, I think it is, or Gabbath, something like that. And uh, they are going out on the hunt. Uh, this will allow them to flesh out their characters. So if they don't like it, uh, they will have the opportunity to have a different character if they so choose. Uh, and I think that one's a, kind of overlooked when you do a campaign, mm. uh, because sometimes players will be like, ah, I, you know, I really want to be a paladin. I, you know, I want to do this. This is great. I want to be a sorcerer, blah, 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 blah. And they get into it and it's like, holy shit, I am not doing this. So <laughs> I, I sculpted it. I, I think these four will all know what they want, but I sculpted it so that if they aren't digging it, uh, they will have the opportunity to become a minor class or a farmer class and bring something else to the table. So uh, I'm giving them options right out the chute. After that, they're on their own. They'll just have to kill themselves. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, do you have something going on in that first episode to really get them hooked into the campaign? Uh, no. Or are you going to keep it kind of simple? Uh, I know it, it Scott is... said last. I'm sorry, I'm interrupting your answer. I know Quite Scott right. last week was like, "Yeah, if they're going to join the campaign, there doesn't have to be a hook to the first episode. They're they're hooked in already. <laughs> they're uh, 
I think maybe I'm not sure episode if that was the right four, thing to say. maybe, well, no, it, and it is accurate uh, because you guys have all signed on. You know, you, you've got the um, patience to realize, you know, oh my God, uh, Macbeth is here and you're going to have to go ahead and deal with this blah, blah, blah. Uh, no, it's, right. it's going to be a slow intro into it. And then anywhere from session three, four or five, Aha! Uh-huh. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> and that is where they will go from there. Well, that sounds cool. That sounds cool. I'm I'm really looking forward to it. I know Dave is looking forward to it. Right? You're looking forward to it, Dave. Right? I don't mean to put words in your mouth. Oh, I am. I already got my character per- portrait, and he looks metal as fuck. So yeah, I'm. Rob, awesome. Rob hates it. I'm sure. <laughs> Probably so. Yeah. I don't think have, have have I ever played with Rob before? I'm trying to think. No, because Rob Rob has now played three times. Rob uh, Rob is one of us, one of us. So he's going to get dice sent soon. Yeah. to get his address. Mm-hmm. Uh, I do not think you have played. He has played in uh, Garen Bluffs. He played in the one before that, which also had a hurricane theme. Although I wrote him seven months difference for some reason. A hurricane theme. Yeah, I, I think I may have played in that one though. I think yeah, the actually you did. Thing, yeah, because yeah, that was with I Ernie, did. right? That that's right. That was with Ernie, and yeah, I you were that dumbass Ernie... monk. <laughs> I was a dumb monk. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, and 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 I'm and I'm playing a monk again, but but yeah, I was. Uh, Is he was, also a, a dumb monk? monk? <laughs> He's in a rut. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, is, is, is your campaign monk going to be talking to the third person like your one-shot no, monk? No, okay. no, 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 no. Yes. No, yeah. That's right. Uh, that, was, that was my third person monk. Rob was uh, Moss Pants. Yeah. yeah. He was yeah, the one that was pissed that you just stood around contemplating the universe because <laughs> that meant he had to fight everything <laughs> and it was short so you had to give him a lift across the water and if rob's reaction is to, is anything like it was saturday oh my god you know it's, it's just yeah i remember that I remember so yeah that. you have played with rob yeah okay yeah that's good that's good that's good yeah jesse's the only new one because he is not played he was in think one episode so uh he he will be an interesting addition it'll be the young guy (laughs) all right my guess jesse will play with a british accent I have not asked yet. That would so. be funny. That, that's my bet. <clears throat> and you guys are not going to get to the, the discovery. You're going to kill each other first. <laughs> he, he, he loves his accents. So we'll see how he does with this one. But uh, but he's not an elf this time. So no, That's true. Maybe he won't be. British no. accent. Lion. He's a dandelion. Top hat. Get it? Never mind. Okay, producer, go ahead and shut this right. off. We're right done now. here. Everyone wave. <laughs> oh, I've on got one day. opening in my campaign next Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> we seem to have lost one. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't resist. It was Ash bin of history for David. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it, it's, it'll player. be fun. It sounds like it. It sounds like it. Uh, Kyle, you want to you wanna wrap us up or you want me to wrap it up? Oh, go ahead and wrap it up. All right. Well, Let's give quick final thoughts, and uh, we'll start with you, Dave. Uh, looking forward to the campaign. Uh, it's it sounds awesome. I mean, I think I think we're going to hit the ground running, and uh, I think it's 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 going to be good. I I, I'm, I say that now. <laughs> say that now, Kyle. Final thoughts. I am in no way prepared for the. Uh... Consolation campaign. I do have, uh, yeah, I haven't read it though. (laughs) And then I have this. No, I went through so much. And then Kyle's notebook. I went through so much. (laughs) I'm breaking before it happens. (laughs) Welcome to the party, pal. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, that's uh, that is a feeling that we've all felt at least once. We're just not ready to 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 DM something, and that's. uh, then the temptation to put off, the temptation to cancel, the temptation to just end it all, all. It all? 
I well, don't want to talk to you, week. Scott, if I'm feeling <laughs> down in the dumps. Jeez. <laughs> Suicide from I'm not there lives. yet, Scott. <laughs> Scott's morose monk may have some issues that some viewers find disturbing. You feel so. like killing yourself. How, how do you plan on doing somewhat. it? Do you have a gun in the house? <laughs> I can't seem to catch anything. I can't hunt. What do I do? I don't want to be a miner. I can't mine. <laughs> <laughs> You're Barney Rubble. <laughs> right. Right. Oh man. That's a rich, rich uh mind uh vein to mind there. That is about uh performance anxiety. But you know <laughs> speaking of performance anxiety. Anxiety, Zach, take it away for us. <laughs> take it away for us. Right, final thoughts. Uh, folks, uh, don't forget, we will be doing one shots for you forever DMs and people who are interested in trying to do this. Also, if you want to sh- see on the talk show or one of the one shots, it's M Hobo Inc. Twitter or Gmail, hit us up. We'll be happy to entertain you as a new player. Zach had a good time. Hopefully, he comes mm-hmm. back. Uh, Rob was dumb enough to come back several times and join the campaign. So, you know, yeah. we're we're like a really Damn. shitty drug. <laughs> <laughs> Or a venereal disease, possibly chlamydia or gonorrhea. Aren't sure. You'll, you'll always have it. We're never going away. <laughs> <laughs> Syphilis. Yeah. There and now, now we'll probably need a new sponsor. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> I'm fish that says, I'm done with you guys. Yeah. I don't yeah. have that smell in the adventure sense. <laughs> and if Kyle oh. doesn't stop huffing, <laughs> huffing putrid sewers. <laughs> Uh, I told him there would be no lawsuit, so don't make a okay, lawsuit. Well, <laughs> <laughs> Still that's the comforting. funniest funniest thing we've ever seen. It's in the archives. If you want to see a human being nearly really die, funny. Kyle, that's it. That was close. <laughs> it's not snuff, but it's close to it. Close. To it. <laughs> 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 uh, Oddfish oh, Games yeah. Adventure Sense, not for huffing. That's right. And then they also have their well, now. Now, don't they? Don't they also do a um, um, shine like a, like a got shine? Thank you very much. That's also shine. what they do. That's shine. also and then our and then our dice sponsor, Pirate Dog Dice. It's not Dookie Dog Dice or Double Dog Dice. When you're rolling dog like dice. shit, Pirate Dog Dice. Pirate Dog Dice. Pirate, Pi- dog. Pirate Dog Dice. When I need to kill somebody, I use Big Red. <laughs> red. Or the green right. and white. The green and white was a that really one works hot. well. That, that one sucked. Well, well yeah. let's all give a wave and thank you very much. We'll see you soon. Sing us out, Dude, Kyle. I said so long. So long. Farewell. Farewell. Oh, gosh. Uh, that's me to sing goodnight. He's got the wrong background up, though. I do. I do. Uh, I'm trying yeah. to think of it, though. Now I'm